Hey everybody, hello, 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 and welcome to a fantastic best of five. I'm your host, Rich Slayton. This is my channel. Whether you're watching on Trovo.live slash Rich Slayton or on YouTube, dot com slash rich slayton either way it's slash rich slayton of course i'm at rich slayton on all social medias as well if you want to do the follow subscribe throw me a little love try to keep the hate to a minimum the best you can i know it's hard i know it's difficult but i'm trying to bring you some great clash royale stuff and today is absolutely no different we got a great best of five between two of my favorite players javi Catorze of sk gaming and St. Bellican, or maybe just Bellican now, based on the CRL graphs that we've been seeing, going head-to-head -head in a best of five with a special format that I developed, this draft ban, or this ban draft, whichever way you want to put the words. A whole lot of fun. We did one last week with Razer and Expedro. It was a blast. Last time I had Vulcan joining me on Voice Today, a special guest from Misfits, currently with a chance this weekend to take control, firm control of first place in Group B in CRL, the new 2v2 star. It's Trainer Dip. It's Dip. Welcome. Uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, I, I know this is very different from a band perspective. Thoughts on this funky, weird, different band format? Uh, I think the format's pretty cool. I think it, it brings like a lot of new decks. Like as we saw with Razor and Pedro, it it can bring like a lot of just like new meta stuff. Um, and I, I I think it's cool. It just switches things up because I feel like things have been the same for a while, especially for CRL players because. The meta hasn't changed for us with the whole E-Dragon thing. Or Skeleton Dragon, I mean. Sure. Sure. So here's the format for those of you who weren't here last week. We're going to do a six-card ban draft. What does that mean? We're going to start with a coin flip where one of the two players, either Belly or Javi, will get to choose whether they want to go first or go second. Whichever one that person chooses, the other one has to go first or second. And then we start our draft. Each player gets to pick concurrently. So first Javi will pick, then Belly, or vice versa. They will go back and forth making their band picks. They will have 60 seconds for each pick to make their decision. Usually it goes fast at the front end and slows down at the back end. One other rule for this this band draft, you're only allowed, you must pick one from each of our two categories. Category number one is troops, and category number two is spells and buildings. So you cannot pick three troops, you cannot pick three spells or buildings. You must pick at least a mix of those in some way. In the end, we will have six cards banned. We'll see some very interesting decks. It's going to be a big different experience. So we're going to go ahead and kick this draft off here in just a moment. This is a best of five match as well. And of course, following this best of five match, a hundred dollar open tournament. So if you're here watching right now, you're able to join us directly afterwards for our hundred dollar open. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Uh, for those of you on YouTube, there is the link. It's going to be exclusively on Trovo after the best of five match. So go ahead, and uh, if you're not on YouTube right now, you can watch it here all the way through the best of five. But after that, we'll start around noon for the $100 open. It's going to be $100 winner take all, 1,000 player tournament, top eight make a bracket. It's going to be really, really great. And of course, I do these regularly every single Wednesday and a few throughout the week. So make sure if you're not already, subscribe, follow, you never miss a moment. Let's go ahead and kick this draft off here. Uh, going to go ahead and give some instructions to the administrator so we can get this moving. Uh, we'll start with our coin flip. So this is my little controller for my Fancy Dancy, sponsored by AMG Graphic there in the back. By the way, the prize pool always supplied by our friends over at Aftershock Media Group, CWA, and Power Bank, supporting mobile gaming content creators and competitive events all over. So thank you very much to AMG for that. So this side will be heads, and that's going to be St. Bellican. This side will be tails. That will be Javi. I'm going to flip it on my desk. The winner will get to choose if they go first or go second. So here we go. And take a look at that. It's this side. So St. Bellican has the choice whether he's going to go first or second. So let's go ahead and get that decision from our administrator in the chat. And we'll get moving on this draft. Uh, let me just double check here to make sure our admin is good to go. There we go. St. Bellican will decide first or second. All right. So we are now caught up on that one. Uh, so, George, you were a part of this conversation last time around. Um, well, that's never mind. That's we're not quite there yet. You were part of this conversation last time around. You were on uh, on chat with Razer as you guys were going through the draft. What's different about this from making your normal band decisions? And you know, what kind of strategy did you did you guys employ as you were making those decisions against Pedro? Mm, we were just trying to be as annoying as possible and just to make it as best for Clone. <laughs> Clone and Graveyard Freeze. We were just banning poison and just 
trying to be yeah just trying to be annoying more or less just to annoy pedro so like just, just make him uncomfortable more or less okay um so just trying to make him kind of get out of his comfort zone a little bit and uh kind of make some pressure here so we're waiting on belly to make his decision whether he's going to go first or second and belly is going to go second so the first pick goes to javi so now put javi on the clock for 60 seconds javi Catorze has the first pick and uh we'll see what he comes out with here's our our ban graphic so we'll go through and get our total six bands for this one look we're experimenting with different band systems um we get some some weird options that come out uh last time was fun now i was kind of surprised that the i feel like the uh, the the bands themselves or the decks that we saw last time around dip were still fairly meta even though we had so many bands um yeah we were kind of just going through like royal api i just typing in like decks that we like remembered that were like still kind of used and we we're still we we're using just decks off memory that like we knew were still good with like these bands in particular and we have our first two bands in so it's javi Catorze banning royal giant and then saint bellican banning prince so now we're on to our second round of bands uh javi is up again for his second ban uh what are your thoughts on these first two here when you look at these uh dip well, there's, like, four, like, good RG decks in the meta right now. So, that that makes a lot of sense. And then, once again, Prince, these those two decks are, like, kind of controlling in the meta right now with RG and Prince. Just both those cards are super strong. So, I, would, I, don't, I think it's a really good idea to take those off the table right away. Royal Giant and Prince both out. Um, so it does also create some cards that aren't as necessary, right? When you're when you're deck building, Prince has seen a rise lately in uh, in a lot of use of the guards who kind of commit a comeback because of so much Prince. Uh, a little bit more in at least in in more casual play, Skarmy has been around. And let's go ahead and take a look at band number two, and both of them going with their uh, with their spell bands for the second round. So it looks like one second here. Looks like the spell ban from uh, Javi is going to be the tornado, and that tornado is way too big. Let me go ahead and adjust the size on this one. One second here, everybody. Why won't you let me select you, tornado ban? Well, we'll go ahead and fix that in a moment. And on the other side, uh, Saint Bellican is going to ban poison. So both of our spell bans in now. Let's go ahead and get Belly's ban up there, and I'll still try to figure out how to adjust the size on uh, on Javi's ban. For some reason, it's OBS is not letting me adjust that one, so I'll go ahead and try to replace that. Thoughts on these spell bans? Uh, honestly, pretty typical in a ban format, especially for Belican, because Belican, his favorite deck is Lava Clone and like, Graveyard Freeze. Those are probably like two of his favorite decks ever in the game, so... You can be sure to see both those from Belican. So now we're getting our last two bands in, and uh, different from last time. Last time, both players banned a uh, a pair of uh, a pair of troops, and then banned one spell or building. This time, as you're going to see on both sides, the final ban on both sides is going to be building. So getting the Tesla and the Bomb Tower both out of contention for the remainder for this entire match. Uh, thoughts on Tesla and Bomb Tower? as these last two. Uh, Tesla's just annoying. It's also a really good bait, which would be good uh, with this ban. And then Belgian ban Bomb Tower, probably because it's good against clone, because you can just drop it, have it just die immediately. And but the Death Bomb kills everything, so Belgian's just trying to make it as best for clone as possible. And, you know, he likes to go that direction with clone quite a bit. Let's see. Oh, there we go. That's at least smaller. It's not dominating the screen as much anymore. So there we have... Oh, now I know what I can do. Boom! Now we have all three of our bands in on both sides. The bands for Javi Catorze, Royal Giant, Tornado, and Tesla. And on the other side for St. Belican, Prince, Poison, and Bomb Tower. So when you're looking at these bands, I mean, obviously you're seeing that Belly is banning a little bit to go ahead and try to get his, uh, his clone some more room. What do you think about the, what, what the other things that you see? Um, I would expect like the, the deck that was used last week, the Mega Knight Graveyard deck. That would be good because since Prince is banned, Mega Knight becomes much stronger. But uh, you could probably expect to see 
a bit of bait. It'll be weird since Bomb Tower and Tesla are gone. It's pre you're pretty much forced to use Tornado or Inferno Tower, which is not as good as both those cards right now in bait. But this is gonna be interesting because with both the buildings bands, uh, band it really makes things like difficult. I think in picking decks, you have to. They're, I don't know. It's gonna be really interesting because both the buildings are banned. It makes bait difficult, which would counter most of the clone stuff. But obviously, clones expected, so now we just have to see how they'll either try to use clone or counter clone. Yeah, I mean, it, one deck that's been very popular in the meta overall lately is a giant graveyard with arrows. Um, we saw that a lot in CRL as of late. You expect maybe with clone being an option, you know, that runs both arrows and snowball. Uh, do you think you might see that one in here? Um, I don't. I don't know because Graveyard Freeze I think will do well against it and I assume if people are going to use Graveyard they're going to use a version that beats other Graveyard decks so I, I think you kind of almost have to go off meta to make a like one of the best decks for a format like this. Well definitely some deck craftsmanship going to be involved in this one and for those of you who are going hey I can I can do this well you have your chance, of course, coming up right after around noon. So in about 45 minutes, a $100 open tournament that you can play in. Winner take all, 1,000-player hour-long tournament, top eight, make a bracket, and then you can win 100 bucks. And that will be directly after, only on the Trovo side. So those of you watching on YouTube will have to go over to that side to get the name and password. But that will be happening directly after this one, a chance for you to flex your skill in Clash Royale. And they should be done with their deck building here, so we're about to jump into game number one. A reminder, there are the bands Royal Giant, NATO, and Tesla. On the other side, uh, Prince, Poison, and the Bomb Tower. So I just remembered I need to go ahead and make the clan closed and then kick this guy out. Bye-bye. Boom. And here we go, getting ready for our, uh, our opening game. I'm really, really excited about this one, and we're going to jump into the action right about now. Here we go. Game number one. Javi Couture is a bottom of your screen, Belican top of your screen, and you can see on the right-hand side, if you didn't catch it already, look at all those bands. Quite a lot. Um, is it too many bands? Maybe. Maybe, but we'll definitely be doing something different here today, George. Yes. All right. <laughs> there we go. I expected nothing less from Belican. An immediate giant skeleton Night Witch, so it feels like we're going clone versus clone between these two. Uh, I think Javi got a bit of a better start here, because the bats are going to kill the baby dragon, so it makes less of a counterpart for Belican. And let's just see what Javi has to defend here. So Javi's also going to sack the tower. Ooh, Firecracker. Okay. So he's going to prevent the, any significant damage on the King Tower here. First minute away, and obviously the action has gone crazy right out the gate. And uh, I got to say, uh, Javi, I like the move of going with Giant Skeleton, a card that has given him trouble in the past, and knows he's against Clone. Immediate Lava Hound comes down, opposite lane, directly on the bridge pressure. And now we're in a Tower Trade situation. Uh, who do you give the advantage here now that we're at this stage, keeping in mind that Tornado is banned? Uh, I think w without knowing the rest of Javi's cards, I think it's hard to say who has advantage because Javi could just have like a secret card in his back pocket that just completely counters Belkin, like an Inferno Dragon or something. So we kind of just got to wait and see what he has. <laughs> and I, the... The Skarmy uh, Lumberjack drop in the pocket doesn't exactly pay off. The Baby Dragons will do some damage on tower, but now up by four Elixir is Javi Catorze after successfully defending that, and he Night Witches into the down tower side. Yeah, Javi's just going to... Now that he's up, he's just going to try to keep up the pressure. Probably go for a big clone push here. And... Let's see. It. Let's see how this turns out. Bogan has arrows. Bogan, he's very he, he's so good at lava flow. I, I see like a point like this being really easy for him. Because even in the past, like the original like Sierra, like the Clan Royale League, that used to be like a draft ban system. Bogan was probably the best drafter back then as well. He he just shines in these formats. 
For those of you asking on voice, that is Trainer Dip, or just Dip It's Now. Again, talking about all the updated CRL nameplates. Uh, joining me on voice to talk through the action and give some analysis. And of course, knows Belly's deck pool very well. And certainly known for Lava Clone and Belly's ban for it. This is, I think Pelican wins right here, or at least gets a significant chunk of damage. Oh, the Firecracker is actually such a smart big one. but quick arrows coming in from Pelican. Giant Skeleton trying to pick up the aggro near the bridge. Won't be enough to keep most of that off the tower. 831 right hand side with a minute 50 remaining in big the match. Hobby, though. Yeah, a lot coming in. Clones early here but no spell to support to get rid of the Skarmy. And most the of that baby. just gets eaten alive, still way ahead on Elixir, if you don't count the Baby Dragon on the board. That Baby Dragon's tough. <laughs> it just shuts down everything that Javi possibly can drop. Yeah, Javi, his deck doesn't just, it doesn't do well against the Baby Dragon on the Flying Machine. And then Belgian's addition of arrows instead of Snowball makes it just almost impossible for Javi, I feel heavily neutralizes the uh, the firecracker in particular. Here we go, final 70 seconds, getting a triple elixir. We'll see if Javi can hold off here, certainly falling behind, and it would just take a few more shots to put this thing pretty much out of range. Firecracker on the far side trying to hold on. Flying Machine does not aggro the tower, chasing the skeletons for a second, but now it does, gets on that tower. That should be a GG well played, and St. Belican takes game number one of this matchup. Very, very solid performance. And was able to capitalize on a, a series of bands that, as you said before, really do seem like they benefit him specifically. Yeah, I think it's, um, now Javi's just gonna probably try to hard counter Lava as hard as possible. But now we have to see if Bell can can use that big brain of his and figure out what Javi's going to use to counter him and then try to counter Javi, trying to counter Javi's counter. So, <laughs> here yeah, we go. Know, but Let's take a look at the stats from that last one. And as you can see, uh, taking a look at the firecracker and the arrows used pretty much every time the firecracker came on board and neutralized that major piece of defense from the Spaniard. Yeah, Belkin, Javi just couldn't get off as many clones as Belkin. Javi just had to keep on defending on his back foot. And yeah, he couldn't. He just couldn't really do much against the flying machine, the baby dragon, the skarmy. There was just too much for him to deal with. All right, game number one in the books to St. Belkin. We'll see what happens in game number two and what kind of adjustments are made. As my co-host, Trainer Dip, just said, let's jump in to game number two. All right, so but yeah, bait coming from Javi. Bait, I wonder what type of bait though. Okay, it's definitely Inferno Tower. So we have to see how, yeah, Pelican's going right back with Lava because that's what he loves most in this game. Oh, grave, no, Giant Graveyard for Pelican. And this is the deck that I thought might be coming out here was this Giant Graveyard deck. It does seem like it would be strong given the bands that we saw. Yeah. Working on getting Dip's voice just a little bit higher on the levels, everybody, in chat. <coughs> so, yeah, Javi's definitely just trying to go for a big snipe against uh, Lava with the Fireball for the Flying Machine, the Inferno Tower for everything else. I just have to see what LZ has. Snowball prediction doesn't really get anything for Belly, and now Knight and Dark Goblin going to the left-hand side. And Skarmy will easily pick up Pretty much all of that. So one three elixir Skarmy defends the entire bait push, and then arrows clean up the Dark Goblin and the Princess at the bridge. Yeah, I think it's a smart deck pick from Belkin. Depending on what Javi's last spell is, it could be really hard for him to break through the Skarmy and the arrows. For those of you in chat asking how to join the tournament, there's the link on the YouTube side. The name and password will be up on the Trovo stream directly after this match, but for now, let's dial in on this big one. 
And a second push set up here for Belican in the right-hand side. Inferno Tower will do a pretty easy job of burning down that giant. He's smart in front of from Javi, knowing that the deck doesn't have Zap or any form of reset. And then the Belly, I think they can equally smart play playing the Skarmy at the bridge to keep the must alive, so Javi has to keep spending. This is where Bell like a double elixir is where Belly is really gonna have a big advantage, I think. But the Infer yeah, the Inferno Tower is just gonna it's gonna remain so tough for Belgian to get any any tanks through to make sure the graveyards do anything because he has Dark Out one. Excellent fireball by Javi. Pretty much neutralizes the entire push and made room for that Inferno Tower. So this is an interesting choice spell-wise for Javi, not the typical pair of log bait cards with the arrows and the fireball. And so far, this second stanza, the double elixir time has been good defense out of the span. Yeah, I'm expecting Belkin just to... Belkin's defense is too strong. I assume the game is going to go... It's going in the distance. It'll probably end in a tie. Is, or, but actually, Triple Elixir Javi might have the advantage because Javi's going to outcycle Belkin big time and just keep on spamming cards. Um, so Javi just has to hold off and try to take as little damage as he can because Belkin will probably always get a little bit of chip with his graveyard and with his arrows. Meanwhile, Javi... Yeah, like, er everything he does just gets shut down immediately. Now, if we do keep this tight, though, I mean, I guess the big question for you, Dip, is with Javi going Fireball and Arrows versus the Arrows and Snowball, if we're close enough, do you think this turns into uh, a Spell Cycle game in favor of the Spaniard? Uh, spell Cycling could be tough, because if he tries to spend too much, then Belly's going to easily punish him with uh, just, like, a, just a giant graveyard or something and just get most of his cards out of cycle, but yeah, actually, if it's close enough, like, I, in the last 10 seconds, Javi just has to hold off and try to keep as close as possible, so the last, like, 10 seconds, he can just throw up a fireball or something. That's what he has to shoot for. Barrel to the right-hand side, Snowball, not arrows available this time. One Goblin will stab down to 20-33 versus 20-50. So here we go, final minute, triple elixir, who can establish some sort of rhythm, some sort of dominance. And Javi sets up Dark Goblin, preparing for that graveyard on the left-hand side, but does take a bit, does get the mini P.E.K.K.A. off on the right-hand side, but this is a nice little chunk of damage, a good opening here for Belican with 35 seconds left. Yeah, Belican, he, he needs to just keep dropping graveyards and just continue to arrow everything. That's all he can really do. And yeah, a smart three. Ooh, good push from Javi, good, but a good defense from Belkin. Belly tried to free bats it, but Javi saw that coming with the free arrows. And so. here we go. That's the pressure you're talking about. Snowball in, bats as well. Arrows create some room, and just like that, Javi steals the lead with just five seconds left. Gonna have to play some defense, maybe put a little pressure on the right-hand side. Does a fireball come in? And oh my word! By just a few HP, Javi with the oops knows that was a little bit of a throw. 53 is the difference. St. Belican takes game number two. Wow. <laughs> that, uh, that's unfortunate. Javi, I think instead of that goblin barrel, he really should have just thrown a fireball because he just needed to keep just dropping. He just needed to drop something, and it, the skeletons would not have caught up to that fireball damage. A wild finish in those waning moments, and just like that, the Brit has taken firm control, a quick 2-0 lead in this matchup. And Javi is already ready to go for our next game, so as you can see, uh, very interesting. We've seen, we saw two clone decks, game number one, game number two, a ver an interesting variation on log bait up against probably the most meta graveyard deck at the moment, or one of the most meta graveyard decks at the moment, when we're seeing the most in competitive. So we'll see what they come up with for game number three. And yeah, you gotta wonder uh, how much Javi is wishing he had that to do one more time to throw the fireball out at the last second. Yeah, Pelican, he, he, Pelican played that really well. It sucks that Javi lost that, because I think Javi played that game near perfect. Just not fireballing at the end is pretty much the only thing that lost in that game. Belly going Royal Hogs. You think we're expecting three Musketeers here as well? Yeah, Royal Hogs is interesting. Um, 
it's a bold move from Belkin to run this deck after Javi used a Psycho Fireball bait deck last game. But looks like Javi also switched, so Belkin pretty happy with that. <laughs> That's just a bold statement from Belkin here that he's just in Javi's head. Okay, so it's the Giant Cycle deck from Javi. And then, yeah, three must from Belkin. Javi can do a lot in this matchup with Magic Archers, but if he doesn't play offense properly, it can get out of hand quick. So Magic Archer does get fireballed off. Controls one Musketeer on the left-hand side, but not going to get much offense here as Javi does not connect and takes a big chunk of damage to open up. Fireball makes it much easier for Belkin, I would say. Now, Javi needs to play early Magic Archers now and just try to get as many down as possible. He just needs to spam them because that's really his only chance of coming close in this matchup. And thanks, Stormy Knight, for subscribing over on Trovo. Really do appreciate your support, Stormy. I've seen you show up in the chat quite a bit, and that extra bit of support does certainly mean a lot. Here we go, heading into double elixir time, and so far the advantage going to the Brit, both in overall games one and damage now. And uh, it's just a tough time trying to break through. Mini Pekka doesn't even get a shot off as the Dark Prince was still turned enough towards the bridge to get that little Pancake Eater out of the game. So here we go, final minute, Ooh. and a rough Dark Prince connection for Javi. That hurts. Yeah, so Hot Belgen is just trying to play it slow. He's, he wants to play into Javi. And let's see. Oh, the Ice Golem prediction. That was nice from Belkin. Magic Archer okay. completely neutralized there. A good a good log zap miner though. That that was a lot, but this is this is a massive push from Belkin. I don't I think this might be Actually no. Okay. Good log really good log from Javi. This could be a big counter push from Javi here. And just setting <laughs> up those muskies right in front of it every single time, so Belly really in the driver's seat. And now has nine. No, go ahead and make that 13 elixir on the board. Javi trying to find some way to stay alive, but the fireball to take the magic archer out of contention. And this looks like it's going to be a clean 3 0 for St. Belican here, uh, unless he makes some sort of egregious mistake, which I really do not see coming in the next two minutes. Dip, it seems yeah. like these the, the, the ban situation has uh, pretty, given a pretty big buff to, to Belly in this matchup. Yeah, Belly's always been so good with fans, and uh, Javi's, Javi's trying to defend this game, but yeah, I that's really hard for him to, to do anything with the Fireball. If it's three months without Fireball, I think it's pretty winnable, but with Fireball, his only real answer for the three must is Magic Archer. Log comes through, Ice Golem at the top, and it's going to be one more Fireball to finish it up. Belly wastes no time. Gets it done very quickly. Three games up, three games down, and the Brit takes a very clean win. And again, I want to talk about the, the, the deck variants that we saw. We saw a wide variety in all three of these matchups, Dip, maybe wider than some would have expected. Yeah, I was expecting more uh, more clone to just kind of be spammed. I, I was really surprised that Belkin used the meta giant graveyard deck as well as the three must deck i expected belly to go more off meta but he went full meta and it really paid off really paid off indeed and you can see here yeah the fireball and really nothing there's very little splash damage for javi in this matchup of course with bomb tower being banned it's one of those things where you almost kind of think hey bomb tower's off the board so why wouldn't royal hog show up at some point throughout the match and it took until game number three, but Belly pulled him out. Maybe after Javi been maybe lulled into a sense of complacency regarding the possibility of Royal Hogs. Yeah, I definitely wasn't expecting Hogs. I think it was a really smart pick for Belkin. Really, like I said, it was really bold considering that Javi used Cycle Fireball the game before, but uh, really smart pick and it really paid off. Yeah, this was a good one. And of course, let's take a look at the bands one more time. Now, now in retrospect, now that we've seen the decks that they chose. Um, talk to me a little bit, Dip, about what you see from these bands relative to the decks that we actually ran through over the course of this tournament. Uh, well, the first game, Belly can... Th that was, uh, that's obviously what we expected to Bell for Belly can use Lava Hound. And then 
Uh, Javi, Giant Skelly, Clone. That's kind of the obvious stack, and Pally has a good matchup there. Game two, uh, Giant Graveyard. Like you, you were also expecting Giant Graveyard. I think that's a all around pretty solid deck with this band. And then Javi is trying to run Bait, which counters Clone pretty well, and Graveyard, I would say. But Bell can end up taking that one at the very end. And then the last match, Javi just tried to use a good meta deck that didn't have any big spell or uh, like a, a poison, but Belgan got lucky. I would say no, good good deck pick from Belgan, since Javi didn't have any big spells. And yeah, it's really hard to kill three musks. Obviously, if you don't have a big spell, no bomb tower or Tesla makes Royal Hogs pretty strong. So yeah, really really good picks from Belgan every game. Yeah, very very nice work and. Uh, you know, we're experimenting with bands. This is this triple dra band draft. I like the idea of the players choosing bands based off what the opposing player sees. Uh, we've also done the double band where a player chooses one troop and one spell or building the band. So, you know, we'll try different things out and see and see what makes the most sense. But I do enjoy seeing the triple band draft. And uh, and again, like, you know, we were, we were just talking about uh, in both of these matches, we've seen a wide variety of deck pool stuff. With both matches, the, the, the Razor and Pedro one, and this one as well. So it hasn't really limited the meta to, to just a few decks. And I think a big part of that dip is that we're coming up on 100 cards, which is such a huge pool of cards to select from at this point. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting with... Uh, yeah, just having six bands really just makes it really, really unique. You can have a big, like, a big variety of stuff. But banning poison, it, it shuts everything down, especially for a player like Belkin just makes clone. Like he's he's so good with clone and graveyard. So I think the ban system almost perfectly caters towards Belkin. Well, thank you very much, man. Yeah, it does it def definitely does help him. And thanks, Dip, for joining for this one. Uh, that's going to be it for this best of five. For those of you watching on stream, stick around. Those of you watching on YouTube, that's it for today. And of course, don't forget that. Uh, we frequently run tournaments on trovo.live slash Rich Slayton. Of course, there'll be one right after this live stream is over. And then, of course, every single Wednesday. So that will be in the show notes. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe, which I'll put in right about here once this video goes back up live again. And the next video will be uh, right around where my Twitter handle is there. Thanks a lot for those of you watching this video on replay. And uh, once this goes back up, I'll cut it off right about here. Peace, and I'll see you back here for more great Clash Royale esports action.